concept of it, let me say it. I believe it's very critical, especially for a developing country, a young democracy. Governance is very difficult. And uh, democracy, perhaps, is, tends to be the most difficult government to work because everybody should have his or her opinion. And uh, tolerance should be the factor for all. But uh, unfortunately, it's not all opinions that are germane or wise. And the downside of democracy is that it tends to be easily subverted with wrong ideas. So you need a council, to me, that shouldn't be composed strictly on the democratic principle. More and better, it should be composed of experience, proven wisdom, um, objectivity. People, the public has been privileged to know through their public service uh, so that they will not frustrate the democratic element of governance, no, say legislature, no, nor deny uh, the right of the representatives of the people to the, the opinions, especially garnered from their constituents, no. But we know that democracy in a multi-party system could be polarizing. And uh, when it tends to be harsh, then it tends to be negative in its products. So a council properly composed should be a council that would afford the polity a delaying factor so the people generally would be enabled to read between the lines of the contributions of their uh, representatives in the parliament. Saying this does not mean the Council of State, as it is now, is my ideal. I believe I'm on record during my tenure uh, for expressing that left to me, the council would be termed the second house that should operate openly, not in camera, and shouldn't be perceived as an exclusive advisory uh, body for the president. And I said so because in my first term, um, the council, I would say, was generally made up of very, very proven, uh, public-spirited people of great experience and achievement. They weren't picked on this democratic principle. It had as its chair the late Professor Kwapong, and the occasions I, as president, met with them they were fearless in expressing their views on policies of government. And sometimes, after an hour or two meeting with them, I'd go away, even feeling a bit hot under the collar <laughs> with them, because they, they were so fearless and so critical, and in a way needled me to explain policies that weren't perhaps too transparent. I thought that was the thing that uh, a young democracy like ours should need. Um, they also contributed, contributed with suggestions that enriched uh, policy and laws and general governance. But because they were meeting the president exclusively in camera, I wondered many a time whether their wisdom, the collective wisdom they contributed would redound to the benefit of the polity as a whole. It was left to me as president to 
uh, use the advice or not. And I thought that was not too helpful. Uh, Kwapo was followed by Professor J. Bakwen, who is still around. And J. Bakwen's council also followed the uh, same steps as Kwapo's council. And so once when the council, I met the council uh, in presence of the media at the castle, I opined that left to me the council, that council that interacted with me should be taken to the public. So the advice they proffered would be there not just for the president or the government, but also parliament and the general public. Because we are in the stage of development where really we could all use some mature advice every now and then. And then if such a council would be uh, empowered or equipped with delaying some of the uh, bills that the polarized parliament tended to rush through with, uh, the general public would know whether the parliament was serving it with the necessary deliberation, uh, perhaps the House having been taken over by, say, very dominant side, majority side, uh, was being rushed through with bills that uh, sooner than later would cost the nation. So, uh, yes, we need counsel. Uh, as I said earlier, should be composed, and I believe the Constitution should be smart enough and insightful enough to fashion the selection of membership of council. That would introduce balance. We are a nation of regions, religions, if you like, even tribes. But we want inclusiveness in governance. So with some... Uh, care and effort, I believe our constitution should be able to fashion a composition that would capture this idea of balance. So uh, whether you are from a minority tribe or region or religion or gender, you would feel included in governance. You are a stakeholder and you must have a say there. I say not that would not be a uh, established exclusively on democracy. Democracy should be there, of course. The People's Forum, Parliament, should be there composed on one man, one vote. You may get a leader whose popularity might make the House say perhaps 60, 70, 80 percent. One-sided, lopsided of some for some form of philosophy or ideology. It may not be too wise. It may even undermine the citizenship of those who are, do not belong with that side. But if we compose a house, like I'm proposing, that would be there to delay some of the rush activities of the majority. Uh, it would enable the public at large uh, to contribute, especially in this day, of powerful media contribute their opinions to temper the polarization with uh, concern and care, and, and to acknowledge that all stakers, uh, stakeholders should be accorded their citizenship rights. I said that, and without sounding like I'm criticizing the current situation uh, because I respect the Council of State as currently composed. Uh, I believe already started off on a good uh, footing. They contributing overworking and uh, I hope they continue through their tenure so uh, policies would be enriched by their experiences. 
but still what how do we know that a sitting president would respect even this uh, accumulated and collective wisdom of a council such as we have suppose the president should choose not to take the advice and since they will be meeting in camera and since these citizens composing the council with their experience and maturity perhaps would not want to be con contra controversial or confrontational with the president. Uh, they wouldn't be the type that would come out rushing to tell the public, well, we advised him in this way or that way, but he didn't take. They wouldn't do it. But then the cost to the nation might be quite expensive. So uh, I still stand by the my opinion of my office when I was in office as president, that yes, Council of State critical for a developing country uh, to, to temper uh, the evolution of democracy as we mature as a democratic nation. So the, this uh, council or second house would infuse some restraint uh, through our development of democratic governance. Uh, I've talked of the constitution being fashioned, of fashioning the composition of such a body so it wouldn't be lopsided or uh, be reflective of class or anything of the sort. It should be just a selection across the board um, of achievers within society, uh, people of experience generally acknowledged, uh, identifiable institutions that contribute to the economic and social uh, development. If you are talking of, say, Chamber of Commerce, if you are talking of uh, professional organizations, academia, or gender, uh, or religion, or chieftains in traditional institutions, I believe con uh, co the Constitution should be able to capture all these uh, institutions into the composition of the second house, which should deliberate openly. De deliberating openly should not uh, trammel the power of the people's representatives in making, say, financial laws for revenue generation or expenditure? No. Uh, the executive running and sustaining security uh, services for the state? No. But generally, opinions, opinions from them about how things could have been handled more reflectively so uh, governance would be more efficient. I, this, I believe, is so important. I've heard people talk of the expense. If you want to count pennies, then you may never gain pounds. You would be penny-wise but pound-foolish. And what would be the cost? What would be the cost of, say, um, ensuring that a house of perhaps no more than 50 people, well chosen to ensure the cohesive, cohesiveness of our state, to ensure uh, the second opinion from which all of us can learn, to give temperance and tolerance to all of us to live in a civilized community. What costs? How much? We've been rushing around, and so far, we don't stop to count the costs. These days, we hear of value for money. If we want value for money, then we must have the proper institutions made up of the, the relevant people to help us in governance. Because it's the most critical thing we need for transformation. It enriches leadership, which is the key to transformation. And uh, so this is what I want to tell you. I support a council of states as composed the way I'm describing it. Uh, without criticizing the current Council of State, Sam, I'm sure 
you know me enough, I would say I want to see a council of state that operates openly. A council of state that is master of its own uh, uh, procedures, but a council of state that is self-restrained not to become um, ob obstructional to governance, but that would only give time for maturation of policies before uh, they are unleashed on the people uh, for governance. Uh, so, uh, gent ladies and gentlemen, this is the view I would want to support and express here and now. Thank you very much. Thank you.